Welcome to Outside the Fame. I'm Jamie Parker, and we are here in Lincoln, Rhode Island at Twin River in front of Fred and Steve's Steakhouse, owned by two former NFL greats and two guys who are certainly known around the Boston sports scene, Fred Smurlis and Steve Diossi, who have now gone from the gridiron to the flat iron. Fred Smurlis and Steve Diossi, two men who have been part of the fabric of the New England sports scene for decades. Both were born and raised here, Fred from Waltham and Steve from Dorchester, and both attended Boston College where they honed their football skills. Fred Smurlis went on to a 14-year career in the NFL, primarily with the Buffalo Bills, where he was a five-time Pro Bowl selection. Steve Diossi had a 12-year pro career, starting with the Dallas Cowboys and then the New York Giants where he won a Super Bowl in 1990. Both men ended their careers with the New England Patriots before eventually becoming Boston media regulars, something that continues to this day. 12 years ago, the longtime friends became business partners in Fred and Steve's Steakhouse at Twin River Casino. It is here where I sat down with the two of them recently. Fred Smurla, Steve Diossi, we are in the midst of their beautiful restaurant here at Twin River. Thanks for having me. And first I want to know how you guys got together to even have this restaurant. Uh, well, it turns out a, a, an old friend of mine uh, is one of the lead lawyers for the whole project and he texted me a couple times and, and uh, finally he said you should really check back with me because there's a great opportunity in front of you. And, and uh, so I called him back and said, okay, well, what do you got? And he said, well, they were talking about a restaurant. And we, we thought immediately a sports bar or something like that. And, yeah, and then we, or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, then we go down and uh, uh, we go down and, and uh, meet with the people at Twin River, and they presented the idea of a uh, of a, a very high end steakhouse and, and a very high end casino, and and uh, we both looked at each other and said, okay, we're in over our heads. What do we do? And Fred said, fake it till we make it. So <laughs> it's uh, well, we drove in with two Holly Davidsons, mm -hmm. right, the with the muscle shirts yeah. on, big yeah. business Short meeting. Pants. Boots. Boots. It's 100 degrees up. We're both soaking sweat. And we just made friends and talked and listened to what they were saying. You guys have so much in common. Where did the friendship stem from? I was his parole officer. <laughs> which, my, my juvie parole officer or my adult parole yeah. officer? I'm not both, sure which both. one. Uh, we, you know what? We, uh, we met uh, when I first went to visit BC. He was already one year in the, in the league uh, in Buffalo and, and uh, scared the hell out of me. And, and I think he wanted to punch me in the head, so I, I just kind of I just kind of stayed away from him. And uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. He has this long, you know, like what do they call those mullets? mullets? No, the long hair. He's looking like at me like this. <laughs> no, that's not and I'm true. Like, what are you doing? You're <laughs> making it up. We were blue collar guys. You know, we fought a few fights and had a few rounds here and there. But we always had good friends, and him and I we had just so much in common. You know, regular. We talked the same. He had mm -hmm. the same accent. Mm -hmm. And when I when I finished <laughs> when I finished playing uh, uh, in the NFL. Uh, Fred had already been out for a year or so, and uh, Fred really helped me a lot in being a, uh, a former player. And uh, and when this came up, this seemed like a perfect opportunity uh, to return the favor and and, and be oh, part of something nice. bigger. And and he uh, uh, he he made it easier for me to transition into a real life. And and then we uh, jump into something a little surreal in a, uh, course, in a high end yeah. steakhouse. And it's the people, yeah. you know, the people that work here. Right. Eating, all the group, we all get along well. Him and I get along, we hang out together, we ride motorcycles together, we go on trips together, yep. right? We do a lot of stuff together. And these people here, we like, we enjoy coming down to visit them. Our staff. The staff's yeah. incredible. Phenomenal. Yeah. The people we, that work here. They phenomenal. are so good and so professional and they do such a good job. And, and you know, quite honestly, we walk around like the Queen of England, like, hello, hello. <laughs> and meanwhile, they're doing all the hard work. Yeah. 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 Well, they're as long doing, as they yeah. know that you guys appreciate them, we right? Because you do. do. You're uh, talking about even, it right now. Not even a question. Now we're going to go and we're going to do a little cooking in the nice. kitchen and we're going to have a big feast and then we're going to talk about their cigar bar. Yes, there's another place that they own together, a cigar bar, and I'm going to learn how to smoke a cigar. <laughs> Outside the Fame is presented by Scholar Athletes, supporting academic achievement through athletics.
I've been involved in the zone for the past two years. It's been a great experience. It's just basically another opportunity to be successful at your school. At three o'clock, I want to go straight home. When I go home, I just want to sleep, either play video games or chill with my friends, basically. The zone gives me an opportunity for at least an hour in there or maybe two hours before school to get your work done and be done with it basically by the deadline. The staff, they always come around, tell people come in the zone, do your work. It's always good to have someone on your back to push you whenever you're down or someone to talk to whenever it's needed. We have moved into the kitchen, and I want to introduce the head chef, Carlos. Uh, he's going to show us all the great entrees and steaks that they have here to serve, and taking care of these two guys. That's yeah, just cool, man. a big, it's, big job, it's, Carlos. It's, it's a big job. It's all on my shoulders. That's why I feel like <laughs> quality control. Yes. We have to test a lot of steaks. Oh to make yeah, sure quality control. They're here all the time to test yeah. to make sure we're doing what we're supposed to do. And welcome to Fred and Steve Steakhouse. Um, pleasure for me to be cooking these wonderful, wonderful cuts. We have a tomahawk, it's a 33 ounce prime ribeye, and also have a 22 ounce prime ribeye. How you can see, it's got that wow factor. Look at the marble, it's prime. Look, this is what gives that nice, nice, wonderful flavor, and the, the texture, it's so, so tender. So you don't even need a knife. Just a fork and you can yep. cut it to it. That's how tender it is. And the quality is outstanding. I'm so proud to be here to talk about these wonderful, wonderful cuts. And this is Fred's favorite. Right, Fred, do you even need oh. to cook this? Or no, should I we just, just take a bite of it? Sizzle on each side. <laughs> if you haven't tried that steak yet. No, I have it, never tried that, that steak. steak up to any steak, anywhere, anytime. That's the really? best steak you'll ever eat. Yeah. That's, 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 a guarantee, that's a guarantee because everybody that comes in, this is the they, one they, they are amazed. They are amazed with the product that we offer. We, got, we offer nothing but the best. Uh, chef Carlos has been with us from the start. He, he's a tremendous chef first off. It's, it's like he's a, a conductor at an orchestra when this kitchen is, is revving. He's got everybody moving the right place, the right time. And his, his creativity and his specials are matched by nobody in the area. He's just so good at what he does. We're so, we're lucky to have him, and uh, don't tell him I said that, I'll ask for a raise, but uh, he, he is a phenomenal chef, and, and we're just very, very lucky to have him. You know, him. it's interesting, because we both all play football. Yeah. You can have the best players on earth. Unless you have the coach to make it work, it doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. This guy makes right, it work. Coach. He's um, over his, his recipes, he watches everyone else, he has a great staff here. But it's the coach that makes yeah. this whole thing. Well, apparently he's keeping you two happy. Yes, he's he is. <laughs> Does it show? Thank you. In the it's kitchen. Always a show? It's always a They're place. sucking it in. Yeah. Right. Combined weight of 600 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. So now we're going to prepare the meat. What do you have to do for this? All Pretty right. Pretty simple, right? Or very, very simple. Nothing elaborate. Salt and pepper. Yeah. Salt and, salt and pepper. Is that because the meat is the star? It speaks well, for itself. It speaks for itself, like yeah. you said. And uh, we use nothing but the best. And uh, then you're just going to put on a flat top first. You're going to sear it. You're gonna sear it until you get a nice crust. You get a nice crust that seals all the juice in. Then you, then you flip it over. Yep. Then you do the same thing for the other side. Then you finish in the broiler. Okay. Then you bring to the temperature you like you like to cook. And usually for the medium rare, it takes about 10 minutes. Okay. Then we pre-slice it, the slice, and we serve this with stuffed shrimp. Ooh, we I like vegetables, shrimp. mashed potatoes. It's it's a full course. Oh wow. It's a full okay. course. It's it's wonderful. Okay, let's put these on the grill. Let's do it. Let's do you it. Ready for it? While the steaks were cooking, we continued our discussion with Fred and Steve. So another thing that you guys do share in common is you both went to Boston College, different years, but just talk about some of your experiences. There's a lot of guys still there, Barry Gallup, who I've talked to about Barry's both of you, best. and he he's, he's just one of the staples for BC, but was involved in both of your lives, which is... Barry Gallup is a, a tremendous yeah. uh, individual, loves Boston College, is a great man. Without Barry Gallup, I never would have been to BC. Not, not and even you too, chance. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One story I'll share about each of you is that I know um, some of the games at BC were at Foxborough, yeah. and you, uh, Southern team, maybe named um, Alabama, was coming yeah. to town, <laughs> and you oh decided God. to get into their heads maybe by cutting off half of your jersey and showing them you had no sleeves and it was freezing. It was like 20 degrees. No, it was two degrees. It was, it was, two, it degrees. was two degrees. two degrees. And you decided to get into their heads. Which sounded really good <laughs> the in the time, locker room. Yeah. In the locker room, nice heated locker room. I was like, yeah, you know, and, then, and I saw them in warm-ups. They were all, up. they all had, they all looked like Michelin men. They had sweatshirts <laughs> and hoodies on. They're all walking yeah. around like that. I'm like, 
I'm, and, and then I started t telling some of my guys on defense to do the same thing. And yeah. they're all looking at me like I was crazy. I was just, just do it. We all came out with, with nothing <laughs> on. And, and it, was, awesome. it was fine because we yeah. started. And then, then all of a sudden there was a, like a TV timeout and we're on the field. And we're sitting there, and I had like four or five guys looking at me like, I'm going to kill you <laughs> yeah, for making me do this. It <laughs> yeah, was yeah. the heated bench, I don't think, back No, then, they did. It was the dumbest but thing But it ever. worked. Yeah. No, it was it, worked, though. We won the game. It worked because you won, won the, the game. game. Yeah. Yep. So one story about you, Fred, is that playing Texas, I heard that you did a cartwheel, which Cot is wheels. so <laughs> impressive as a defensive lineman doing cartwheels. Pound nose tackle. I know. But I no, no, no. Not a cartwheel. Oh, a bunch of them. Multiple cartwheels. Now, how did you even learn that skill? Uh, you know what? If, if you if I had won against Texas before that, I would have learned it then. I just learned, <laughs> I just started doing. You just field. started doing it. I don't even remember because I'm watching a film. The coaches go, "What are you doing?" I'm going, "This is me going cartwheel all the way down the sideline." And I was all the way on the pitch. I was supposed to be. Mad. You were expressing your joy <laughs> in a creative good. fashion. That's Most what you were men doing. don't know how to do cartwheels, but uh, I, I'll I give it to you. Barry didn't even know what it was called. He's like, you know, when you put your hands down, and then it was hilarious. Tell you so. thing. I had an easy bake oven as a child. You did. I love so you started baking for a long time. Yeah, I was time. a nerd. I played chess. I played Stratego. And you were in touch with your... So your mother was probably very proud Mother from Somerville. There you go. <sighs> I the hill, so she was tough. But after beating up a few times, right, I started right, training. Right. And that's mm -hmm. how I started training for sports. Boxing, wow. training, lifting, and punching. Stay with us on Outside the Fame and wait until you see what Carlos has prepared for us. I've been involved in the zone for the past two years, and it's been a great experience. It's just basically another opportunity to be successful at your school. At three o'clock, I want to go straight home. When I go home, I just want to sleep, either play video games or chill with my friends, basically. The zone gives me an opportunity for at least an hour in there, or maybe two hours before school to get your work done and be done with it basically by the deadline. The staff, they always come around, tell people come in the zone, do your work. It's always good to have someone on your back to push you whenever you're down or someone to talk to whenever it's needed. This is unbelievable. Carlos, Hi, Carlos, you outdid yourself. Thank you so much. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to cook this wonderful, wonderful meal for our clientele, for these two wonderful guys. What do we have here? We have a tomahawk. It's served with it's a grilled ribeye, uh, two baked sashimim, you got a mashed potatoes and served with the vegetables, top of the line. And? and hey, and? we got a porter for two, 40 ounce, 40 ounce porter house. 48 ounce. It's wow. for two, but if you dare, for, two it's for or one Fred. person. Or just for Or just for Fred. Yes. Yeah. Just appetizer. Yeah. And we have a five pound lobster. It's unbelievable. It's Who's outstanding. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? It's such a good boy. This? Yeah. It's a cream corn. It's our famous that. cream corn. Famous cream corn. Can't come to Fred and Steve's Steakhouse and I have an order of a cream corn. It was amazing. It's amazing. Fresh and wonderful. And we got asparagus, the lemon zest. King crab mm -hmm. legs, directly from Alaska. Colossus shrimp, we got oysters, we got some uh, little necks. Nothing but the best, fresh stuff. Doesn't get any fresh in it. Is. Carlos, very nice. Yeah, thank, you, thank, you. Carlos. Carlos. thank you, thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank now you we're gonna eat. My pleasure. The motto for Fred and Steve's Steakhouse is the ultimate steakhouse experience. And they do not disappoint. Is the dakin on your lap? It is my wife, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually feel really bad about all the photographers watching us right now eat this food, so we're gonna have to save some for Come the real guys. men. Save what? The real men. I'm sorry, do what? <laughs> That's really good. Of course, I just had to sample that famous cream nice. corn. Oh my, oh my god. god. That's help really you. good. <laughs> Is there like a food dance? Do we do any food happy, dances? Happy food a dance? happy food dance? So now we're gonna go on to the illustrious NFL careers of both of you. I know, pretty good, both of you. You guys lasted 
over a decade, both of you. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, 14? 14 years. 12, 12 years. 12 yeah. years. So 14, 12 years, five-time Pro Bowl, All-Pro. You're like a legend yep. in Buffalo. Do they have streets named after you or something? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Something's <laughs> named after you. There's a bar named after them <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Buffalo people uh, are phenomenal. Yeah. They, they, they yeah. uh, you know, I've been to Buffalo with Fred many, They're hardcore many fans times. there, yeah. And to this day, he is he's a god there. They, yeah. It doesn't matter. You go anywhere. We, we went to... Uh, we we're going to the, it was a night game. The Patriots were playing there, and we mm -hmm. wanted to watch the afternoon game. So we found this place we could actually smoke a cigar and watch the game. Cigar with spray paint on yeah, the sign. It said on the sign. It was in a <laughs> decrepit neighborhood. Right in the middle of the oh, and all no. of a sudden, it was on the Old side of the house. It said cigars, and uh, so we go in there, and there's two people in the bar, including the bartender, and they both automatically recognize Fred. By halftime, there were 35 people in there. Wanting to be around Fred. Buffalo would never trade for anything. Be in there. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't want to play anywhere else. And what about you? you Twelve years, uh, you played with a bunch of teams as well. Uh, yep. Both of you finished up your last two years with the Patriots. Yeah, that's that's right. another commonality. That's wow. right. They brought us home. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So uh, I, I, I got to say that obviously, the, yeah. The winning the Super Bowl was mm -hmm. great, and and really it was more about your teammates and, and the locker room and the way it felt uh, to be around the guys. And I came from Dallas with some brilliant coaches in, in Tom Landry and Gene Stallings, and, and, but they just, uh, things weren't going their way, and then I got traded to the Giants, and, and within a week of, of being exposed to Bill Belichick and Bill Parcells, I realized that these guys were different, and, and Bill Belichick in particular, X's and O's, was like nothing I'd ever seen. It was nirvana Design. for me in terms of, yeah. uh, uh, of, of wanting to win football, and then to have it pay off like that was, was just unbelievable, and, but I still, we had a reunion a few years ago, and it was like we never left the locker oh, room. Oh, see, guy, that's great. You never forget that. Yeah, right? everybody goofing the same way we used yeah. to goof in the locker room. And, and it's just, it's, that's something that I think a lot of guys, I don't know about Freddie, but we've talked about this, but one thing you miss is that you know when oh. you go to the locker room, every day something funny is going to happen. Somebody's going to do something stupid. Somebody's going to be funny. <laughs> Somebody's going to make a great play. Somebody, it's, they, tapes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just, there, there's it's nothing like. Think about it. Yeah. The, the biggest Toughest, fastest, best athletes on earth. Right. And they're all in this locker. One tenth of one percent yeah. of pro guys, college guys, all right, those guys right. you see in the field, they're not yep. good all enough together, to make it. Yeah. So you get guys that think fast, to react faster, and all that stuff, and they're there with you, and yep. you're one of them. Yeah. You don't even realize it, you're just in. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's one more thing that's co uh, that connects Steve and I. He won a Super Bowl. Yeah. He beat me when I was in San Fran. And then he beat my Buffalo Bills for the Super Bowl. And then fast forward to 2000, I don't know, was it 2000? My son was in Se the same 17 situation. 17 years later. So yeah, at least, yeah. He, yeah. Was, he, was, uh, he was snapping for the uh, field goal in the exact same, exact same end zone last year of Candlestick Park. Yeah, and, unbelievable. Yeah, it was, it was pretty it's, cool. I mean, 17 yeah. years later, yeah. you and Zach become <laughs> the only father-son to win the same franchise Super Bowl. I mean, that's pretty cool. It, it is, it, and, and it was- it's History. It, yeah, it's, it's yeah. great. It's, Stay with us for more Outside the Fame from Twin River Casino with Fred Smurlis and Steve Diossi. Scholar Athletes, founded by Suffolk Construction Chairman and CEO John Fish, partners with public high schools to help close the opportunity gap for thousands of students in grades 9 through 12 across the Commonwealth. Scholar Athlete programs support success in school, as well as success in life. Today we meet Shanice Bugs from Scholar Athletes. The zone was very beneficial when I was in high school. It was a place where I can call my own and be comfortable a place where I can make new friends, a place where I can learn the benefits of being healthy and the benefits of sports and how I can balance both. I wanted to work for Scholar Athletes because I wanted to give back to my community that I was born and raised in. Being born in Dorchester, I know a lot of students needed that support, needed that space where they can come in and um, be able to unlock the potential that they have. I've seen tremendous growth in Scholar Athletes. When I was in high school, they were more of a program where students they need help with studying for tests, quizzes, getting their homework done, papers done. Um, there was a designated person there to assist with all of that. Now the zone has grown into a program that provides 
different initiatives. I know we run a lot of intramural programs. And we also have a We Are Fit program for girls, which is really profound in helping girls come out and exercise and get involved more in sports. All right, now we're here at Blackstone Cigar Bar, like I like to call it, Steve and Fred's Cigar Thank Bar, right? You very we gotta much. give them a little plug, a little plug. And we're gonna learn all about cigars, which is happens to be more your forte than Fred's, anyway, yeah, right, you know, right, right? About uh, 12 years ago, uh, when we got involved with Twin River, uh, my first thought, because I'm a cigar smoker, was uh, you need a cigar bar. You got hundreds of thousands of square feet of smoking space, and, and getting a place to smoke a cigar is harder and harder. But now, uh, uh, about seven years ago, I had all the cigar connections, Freddie knew a bunch of guys in the business, and uh, we said, yeah, we can pull off a cigar bar, and, and uh, it's evolved to a point where uh, we do a nice cigar business every month. I'm a rookie, I know nothing okay, about well, listen to Captain cigars, Kirk. so tell me, Captain. The uh, first thing is a cut. Now, you've got different ways. You can do a V-cut or a flat cut. I like the V-cut. You basically just put it in there, get it going, and look, it gives you a pretty straight V-cut. Next thing about uh, lighting cigars is, is uh, a lot of people like to, what, what they call, toast the, the outside a little bit oh, first. okay. Just toast the, uh, the thing a little bit. And then what a lot of guys like to do is just a little puff out, like. Yeah. Oh, again. you push it out, okay. Then you hold the lighter again. It's a little complicated, this cigar stuff. Jeez, oh, that was a big flame. <laughs> but, but, you, but you hold it below. What, okay. You, you hold it below. I, mean, I want to lit my eyebrows on fire. No, not at all. But that's pretty much the, the way to do it. In cigar bars, I noticed that guys will have conversation over cigars. Guys right. that you, you never even met before. Now you just take it up. <laughs> so you don't even. You're, 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 all right, go ahead. All right, now, now take, I'm blowing it out, right? Watch yeah, it well, just a little bit. There you go. And now put the now light the lighter again. All right, and bring it just below it. <laughs> I need glasses. That's good. That's plenty. A little more. And sometimes you roll the cigar a little Don't bit. Don't inhale it. Don't inhale it. There you go. One and done when it comes to cigars. Now it's time to get back to talking football. When you look at the game today, how much more has it changed than when you guys were playing? Well, it's more passing now. Yeah. You know, back then it was pounding, more pounding, more. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, the game plans are totally different. So they changed a lot of rules, you know. They did it because mm -hmm. of Bill Belichick. They changed the quarterbacks can't beat up your receivers. Mm -hmm. When he played Buffalo in the Super Bowl, they had Andre Reid. They pounded him. That's all we did. Took him out of the game. That's all we wow. did. I remember Steve Nelson clothesline receiver with Vaz, and he's on the ground. And the was, ball wasn't even being thrown to him. No, he yeah, looks at, that's he, right. he's on the ground looking. He goes, look at me. Remember who did this to you? Yeah. Yeah. You can't do anything. It's not as violent. Right. It's yeah. much safer. 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 Yep. It's, it's a faster yeah. game. Yep. You know, it was more brutal back then. As we progress, you know, when you get the Marinos come in and, uh, and Elways and all these different guys, they pass more, but nothing like now. And the other thing is, uh, the, it used to be, camp, training camp used to be a war of attrition where it was basically six weeks of practice where four of those weeks was double sessions, full With hitting pads. all the time, wow, really? nonstop. There are guys that played back when we played that probably couldn't play in the league this mm -hmm. year because of the speed and all that stuff. There's also guys that are playing now that might not have made it through training camp back, back in the yeah, day because yeah, that was, was a lot more. Well, look at it this way, right? What, what the advantage of the teams had by having a violent preseason mm -hmm. is the wimps were, were pushed out. In other words, guys that weren't tough enough to make right. it through the season were gone. Now you have guys like Steve said, really fast, strong, can catch anything. Yeah, After six yeah. games, oh, I get a little hangnail, and they don't make it. <laughs> right? All right, we're officially yeah. old bastard football yeah. players. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. I was like, yeah, we can't hang. That's right. Yeah. You yeah. take your right. nap. Well, back know. in my day. <laughs> my day my mom get off of my lawn, right kid. Fred and Steve have had quite the NFL and post NFL careers, and they would love for you to come down to Twin River in Lincoln, Rhode Island to have that ultimate steakhouse experience. Fred and Steve, I just want to thank you so much for my small introduction into Mantown. I'm a little bit more in touch with my testosterone level. Maybe I can be standing up now. Oh, Who knows? That'd be, that'd be great. <laughs> Fred's going to learn that soon, too. So here's your chance now, Fred, to say, look into the camera and say, I love Tom Brady. <laughs> they know that. Yeah. <laughs> I love Tom. Uh, Tom is the greatest athlete in any sport, anywhere. You can't ever re replicate what he did. Mm. 
Uh, go, oh, if I knew this would happen, I'd go and smoke them a long time ago. Make sure you know she's going to be Steve's yeah. restaurant. Uh, I moved the out of the way down. to see the wonderful display of cigars. Steve put that together. Beautiful. And Steve, had this is a really nice bar. Outside the Fame is presented by Scholar Athletes, supporting academic achievement through athletics.